بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ویلکم ٹو دی سیونتھ لیکچر آن کمپیوٹر پروگرامنگ فار سول انجینئرز ویئر وی آر لرننگ پائتھن ود انجینئرنگ ایگزامپلس اینڈ ان ٹوڈیز لیکچر وچ از بیسکلی اباؤٹ فنکشنز اینڈ فائلس ویل مینلی کنسنٹریٹ آن فنکشنز وائل ویل کنٹینیو دس ڈسکشن آن فنکشنز ان دی کمنگ لیکچر ویئر وی ویل لرن مور اباؤٹ فنکشنز بٹ ود فردر ایگزامپلس آن فائلس ایز ویل سو ان ٹوڈیز لیکچر یو لرن Uh, some rules of uh, uh, functions and their local and global variables and with the bonus example of cost estimation in uh, masonry building construction so let's start with our lecture with this example by running spider so we click on windows menu we go to anaconda we click on spider and wait for it to appear so here as usual we have a blank project to work on uh, with some comments on it i'll read them because i don't want to make any confusion so we have a blank project here like this whatever we do its results if they are written in the uh, are if they are printed they will be displayed in the console here and if they are plotted uh, they will be available in the plots as graphs here or if you want to see any variables have been defined and what are their stored values you can click always click on variable explorer and see the variable and their values so let's see the example that we are working on today we are going to write two functions uh, we are working on a cost estimation of a construction of uh, a masonry wall uh, so if the wall has a length um, it will be something horizontal like this the wall also has height and if uh, it is a single brick thick then we know that uh, the number of bricks that are used to construct the walls are same that we see on the surface but maybe the brick wall is much thicker than the thickness of the brick so by thickness more bricks might have been used Uh, to construct a wall you at least need one mason who is an expert in placing layers of bricks and one or maybe more laborers who are maybe transporting bricks nearby the mason or maybe mixing mortar someone another uh, labor might be transporting the mortar that is used uh, to join the bricks together so there may be a couple of labor and one mason so the problem is to estimate the cost of the construction of a particular wall or a group of walls so here in order to solve this problem we are going to write two functions um where which will input the length and the height of the wall maybe walls all together and one of the function if it is given the height and the length will give us the number of bricks so we'll consider the uh, surface area of one brick is 9 inch by 3 inches um, the second function will be able to calculate the cost of the wall with the same input of length and height of uh, the wall uh, we'll consider the unit cost of uh, one brick to be 12 rupees and Uh, in order to find the total cost of uh, wall we need to multiply this with the uh, number of bricks which we will find from the other function we don't need to recalculate it again so this will be a fun thing to do um i may or may not be uh, doing and taking care of these few things uh, in the example but in your uh, lab Uh, for assessment purpose you should be taking care of all these things um where we need to increase the number of bricks by 10% maybe because by transportation some bricks may be lost uh so we'll increase it by 10% roughly also if one labor charges uh, 12 uh, rupees per per square feet of the wall area uh, then Uh, if you multiply the number of labors with 12 and further with the area of the wall we'll find out the cost of the labor we can also find the cost of the mason uh, by multiplying the number of masons uh, with the, uh, the 
charges they take for example if they take 20 rupees per square feet of the wall and the number of masons multiplied with it will give us the total cost of the uh, masons so the total cost of the wall will not only include the number of bricks the cost of the number of the bricks but also the cost of the labor and mason and of course there is mortar used to co so cost of the mortar will should be there as well the the wall will be eventually plastered and painted so that cost must also be included but for now we will just consider the cost of wall covered by the brick and labor and mason only so it will be just a wall with uh, without the cost of mortar and plaster and paint work on it so let's continue with this example so, so i'll start first of all by um, defining the first function which is the number of which is to calculate the number of bricks and in order to define it we have to write we have to start writing def which means define function so after writing this we will give our own name to this function um, so for example it is number of bricks i'll say num underscore of underscore bricks so what i mean to use this name for is to tell you that we can use uh, underscore uh, in the names of variables as well as functions we cannot use a space it means two separate things one is bricks and the other is num of which is a very odd so it, we should not be using uh, multiple we should not be using spaces or tabs here so you, if you are interested to provide a gap in the name better use underscores or maybe not use anything and just write num of bricks you may uh, like to differentiate the words in it by perhaps uh, capitalizing them like this so a num of bricks uh, but for now let me use the underscore just to prove the concept so after defining the name of the function that we will call to calculate the number of bricks once we tell the height and the length of one wall or all the walls together uh, we in the parenthesis list out the variables afterwards which are called parameters or maybe arguments uh, which this function requires to calculate whatever it want to calculate so we know to in order to calculate the number of bricks we have to multiply uh, the we have to divide the area of the whole wall by the area of just one brick and we'll get the whole wall uh, we'll get the number of bricks in whole of the wall so let me write here height and then comma length so after writing this we should uh, start making a block of code by writing colon at the end and press enter automatically the indented block will start so block means if you write a code here for example and here and here and here and here and here uh, all this code will become a single block which will be running once we call this function by this name but if after this uh, there is something without uh, a section which is without any indent so what it tells us that this is a single block run all of this once a num of bricks is called but do not run this because it is not indented equal to this and it's not part of this function so this is how we differentiate which statements or expressions are part of this function and which are not let me delete that and of course bring the indent by pressing tab this time the next thing we write about the function which is an optional thing is to write the document string now this is there is no it is not a comment uh, in for writing a comment we can write a hash and write something after it or maybe we can write it with uh, triple uh, quotes uh, again 
uh, or maybe single quotes, uh, in three times single quotes as well. But this is uh, not uh, a comment what we are going to write. It is a string which is called document string and it should be closed in double quote like this or single quotes. And here you write uh, about this function so that once you will be documenting your fun this whole project automatically whenever someone asks uh, uh, Python that what does this function do, Python will tell whatever you will write in this string. So people will get help about it. So you can see for example uh, here a Python has told that when it was installed, what version it is, what Microsoft in, uh, processor it is using, who, copyrights and credits and license and all about it. This is something that is displayed once Python is running. So it is telling us something about Python. Similarly, if you want uh, this function to tell Python about uh, its purpose or function, uh, you should write this string. Otherwise, it's optional. You may skip it. But for now, let me write a string that to calculate uh, number of bricks from wall area defined by height and width. And we have closed it in the code already. So I go to the next line by pressing enter. So it started from the same indented place like this. Now, uh, once we will receive the height and length, uh, if we divide it by the surface area of the brick, of one brick, we'll get the number of bricks. So let me write. Uh, NB, which I'm using as for short of number of bricks, is equal to height multiplied by length and divided by AOB, which is area of one brick. Or let me write AOOB, which is area of one brick. So above it, I need to calculate that. So I'll write AOOB is equal to brick width times brick height now what i want is i can directly write the size uh, mentioned in this le lecture here nine by three inch here but then i want this to be a versatile function so that if we want it to find out the number of blocks which are larger than bricks so we can change their size in these variables here so let me define brick width equals to 9 and brick height equals to 3 inches now we know that uh, the height and length will be provided to us in feet so we should convert these into feet as well so I further and divide the area by 144 so this will convert the square inches of the surface area of one brick into the total square feet now we know number of bricks is a quantity and it cannot be in decimal and once we will divide height times length divide by the area of one brick we may get some decimal numbers so let us round them up to zero digits so I, I press enter to go to the next line we know if the result is uh, say 7.5 and we round it to 7 this means we are short of half brick so why not increase the number of brick by 1 so I do plus 1 here for that now notice these uh, that these are all the set of statements or expressions that we wanted to run uh, 
for calculation of bricks. Now we have the number of bricks with us. So this is this part of the code that we have written. We already have written the document string on the top. We have set the parameters as well, function name, and we have written def and colon at the end of the first statement here as well. Let's write the last statement that closes this function and that is return. Now, if you remember from the last lecture, we haven't returned anything and we just printed the uh, results which were the x components and y components right here. But here in this function, we are not going to print the number of bricks. We want the caller of the this function to receive the number of bricks in return. So after return, here I will write nb. So now once this function will be called and run, it will show nothing on the screen, but it will return back with the value of number of bricks. So let me move this function in some further lines and start calling it on the top somewhere here. So as we know, white spaces or gaps are allowed in Python. So we are okay to write the code anywhere vertically but white spaces horizontally are dangerous and not allowed we'll, i'll demonstrate that after a while as well so here i'll simply say print here i'll simply write num underscore bricks equal to I'll call this function here num underscore of underscore bricks and let's say the in parenthesis I'll write the height and length so notice I, I have to first write height then the length I cannot write length first and then the height then the formula may start giving us wrong answers but luckily in this calculation it doesn't matter whatever we put as length and height but in many formulas it really matters the first thing and the last and the second and, and other things as well by the way we can have we can have as many uh, parameters or arguments here within parentheses of a function as you want but for our case let me put uh, three feet high and ten foot long wall so see let's figure out what will be the number of bricks in that so what this will do is if i run this code this statement will run and this function will be called with 3 and 10 as height and length and once 3 and 10 will be there these variables are constants of this own function they will be used to calculate the area in feet of the brick And then uh, these height and length will be used in this formula to eventually calculate the uh, total number of bricks around it. So plus one with that. And then whatever is the result will be returned back to this name, which we are now storing again in a new variable called num bricks. And now after that nothing will happen because once the python will read the first two lines they are blank nothing will happen the third line i already explained what happened with four five six seven line number nothing will happen it is blank and line number eight to fourteen are a function it cannot be run by python unless or until it is called explicitly by you like this so python will do nothing with that and also there are three more blank lines 5 15 16 and 17 so nothing will happen there as well so actually this code should return nothing to us here is an error that, that the function is undefined actually because the code is running and it reached to line, line number three and tried to find out uh, the definition of number of bricks it has not been defined up there that is why it is saying i it has not been defined so as it is python is interpreting it 
it is reading line number one two three and then it found a missing name it has not been defined yet and then error appears so this means we had to define this function before using it so i just control x cut it from here once i will paste it on the top again you will see the error is gone and now because it is defined first then it has become available to us as well so now at the end what we need to do is we need to simply print the result for us so let me write print and in parenthesis i'll write num underscore bricks so let us run the code and see how it functions so it's fine we have rounded and plus one result of 161 bricks so if for example the calculated result without one and without rounding was 160.3 bricks so 0.3 brick is something which is not available in the market so we rounded the 0.3 but we and we got 160.0 but then because 0.3 was still needed so we had to instead of buying a 0.3 size of 0.3 brick we got we should purchase a whole brick so we increased it by one further so 161 bricks will be required to construct a three feet high and 10 feet long wall so if we have five walls like this so here in the quest uh, in the call we can say 10 times 5 so the length of the wall will become 50 feet while height will remain 3 feet so let's quickly see the result so we need 801 bricks for that so let me revert it now and move to the second function which was to calculate the cost of this wall so i'll write this function above it I'll start writing it first above and see is it okay to write it there or not so let's define a function called cost or maybe because it's a total cost it is just not bricks it is the labor plus mission as well so let's write total underscore wall underscore cost and again we need to know the height and length as before so let me copy this from here and paste it here just to save some time and of course the function definition will uh, the first statement of function definition should end with a colon as a block starter and then at, once we press enter the block with the this indent for this function will start so we can write start writing the code right now so in order to find the total cost so i'll write cost of one brick equals to 12 rupees cost of mason equals to 20 rupees cost of labor equals to 12 rupees so we haven't used these uh, variables yet that is why we are getting this warning so let's now calculate the total wall cost for that first of all we need the number of bricks so total wall cost is equal to in order to calculate number of bricks let's call this function which finds the number of bricks for us so i'll write here num underscore of underscore brick within parenthesis it is telling us what it needs in input so we'll write the same height and length going in the same fashion here h e i g h t comma length so whatever length and height are given to this function will be transferred to this function to find number of bricks and now if we multiply this with the cost of one brick which i copy from here and paste from here and in order to be able to be visible I just use the same backslash rule uh, to write backslash and then enter to keep writing it in the next line or multiple line 
so multiplied by this plus backslash in the next line uh, we keep writing um, cost of mason into the area again which is height multiplied by length plus next line backslash and then enter for next line same indentation um, cost of labor make sure the capital and small are correct uh, because the case sensitive uh, nature of python will consider small l labor as different than the capital l1 so i'm using different uh, spellings of labor here and here which both are fine from dictionary point of view so cost of labor multiplied by height again multiplied by length so because the labor charges uh, 12 rupees on the square feet so the total square feet of the wall is height into length and multiplying it cost per square feet will get the total cost of the labor now as this completes this calculation of all the cost with the cost of um, bricks cost of mason and cost of labor we can now press enter to the next line and correct the indentation by pressing backspace and then return the results so let me write return and the result we want to return this time is dwc which is the total wall cost and this completes the function so let us after this store the total wall or directly print the total cost total wall cost so i'll say print and within parenthesis i'll call the function of total underscore wall underscore co underscore cost and within parenthesis i'll write height which is the same height as we wanted here of three feet comma the length which was 10 feet for our case so let me now run this code and see how it works so it works fine for us same number of bricks and the total cost will be 2892 rupees including the cost of labor and mason and bricks but as we discussed earlier it does not include the cost of the mortar between the bricks and plastering on the surface and the labor required for plastering and mixing mortar too now notice this that these variables are written inside the block of the function also these variables are written inside the block of this function so if here separately i want to print the brick width for example so i try to call this variable and ask it to print the brick width and now run the code so it gives us an error saying the brick width is not defined and this is what is called a local variable so what are local variables local variables are those variables like these which are only available locally so these variables cost of mason cost of labor cost of one brick are only available within this block and here we use them here as well similarly brick width and brick height is only available within this block it is local to this it is not available globally throughout the code and here we actually used it for internally for some calculation work so they are local so they are not available here like this but let me separately write maybe on the top or maybe i can write it here or maybe i can define a uh, variable here as well by this name of brick width so let me write brick width is equal to 100 for example now let me run this code again this time it runs fine without any error 
Notice the previous results of number of bricks and cost is repeated correctly because it remained 3 by 10 size of wall. But then once I print the brick width, it prints the value stored in this variable. And this variable which, is this, which has the same name but has the value of 9 is actually used here with the value of 9 only. And that is why we had the repeatedly same number of bricks as before. But once we called the number of brick function and brick width was 9 and it was used. Then after that once we calculate, we asked it to print brick width. It actually printed the global value of it. So it again emphasizes the fact that these variables are available locally. While if there is any variable defined outside any function, it is available outside the function as well. So here you have seen that uh, the variables which are outside the function are actually global variables. They are not only available to this part here, right specifically in the last line here, but they are actually also available within the functions as well. So to demonstrate to you that, let me remark or comment this line. So this line will not run anymore and run this code now. So once I run it, the brick width is taken as 100 of inches. And once the result is in the division here, it reduced the number of breaks to only 15. So let me change it to 10 just to see that is this value of break width is also available inside this function as well because it is a global value. Let me run this again. So yes, it has actually changed the result as well. And this means that the variables which are written outside the functions are global functions, are global variables. They are available everywhere in the code while any variables which are written like this one inside the function, they are local, they cannot be used outside at all. So this was uh, today's lecture and now about today's lab which will be assessed. So in today's lab, you have to repeat the same task again, except for the total wall cost function. You need to increase the capability of total wall cost by also be, which it should also be able to take the number of masons and number of labors in the input as well. So if the number of labors will increase, the cost of wall will increase and so as with the increase in number of the masons. You also note that I have not increased the number of bricks, the total number of bricks by 10%. So you're, you should also increase the total number of bricks here, whatever you get the result by 10% and return that result uh, in this statement. So two additional things, take care of the 10% increase in the final number of bricks you calculate and also the inclusion of number of labors and number of masons in total wall cost. So the, both these functions will slightly change. So good luck for today's lab. Assalamu alaikum.